Hello friends, this is Angela from Art of Creation Homestead and as you can tell you're in the kitchen with me again. Today I'm going to teach you how to make crock pot beef stew. We're going to be using a lot of our homegrown veggies. This is going to be so good. So let's get into this. Here we have a little over a pound and a half. It's more like a pound and three fourths of beef stew meat. Now I have cut it up a little smaller, trimmed off a lot of the fat. I've seasoned it really good with some salt and pepper. Now I'm going to toss it in some flour because we are going to brown this up. And this flour is going to help thicken your gravy. So you want to toss some flour onto your meat cubes. It'll be probably around a half a cup of flour. And just use your clean hands and toss them around. Get them all nicely coated with your flour. And then I'll take you over to the stove and I'll show you what we do next. So over here we have our oil getting nice and hot. I am using avocado oil. You can use any neutral flavored oil that you like or anything that you use in your house. And once this is nice and hot, we're going to start dropping our beef in in batches. And you want to brown it till it gets nice and brown. It should only take just a few minutes. I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. As you can see, I've just got a few in here. You do not want to overcrowd your pan. Because if you overcrowd your pan, your beef will steam instead of brown. And that's not good. You want it to get a nice brown on it. And a nice brown crust from this flour. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's all browned up. As you can see, it's all browned up now. Now it's not by far done. You don't want the meat done. It will cook in the crock pot. But you do want a nice brown on it and you do want that flour to brown up because that flour is gonna cook off the meat and it's gonna help thicken up your gravy. So now we've gotta get started on cutting up all these veggies. We have our browned stew beef. Just throw it right in, juices and all. You want all those juices because trust me, it's gonna, those juices are gonna make it wonderful. In this bowl, we have about a pound to a pound and a half of small potatoes. I use just the last of our potatoes that we harvested here on the homestead. You wanna quarter them. Make them about the size of your pieces of beef. And I wish these were carrots from our homestead, but if you guys have been watching us, you know our carrots aren't quite ready yet. They will be ready in about a week or two. So this is about three-fourths of a bag of organic baby carrots that I've just cut in half. So we're gonna add all those. Now we have about two stalks of celery that I have chopped. Now celery is optional. You do not have to add celery, but I personally think it adds a great flavor and you never know it's there because it melts down to nothing. And we have about three-fourths of a cup of chopped onion. I am using red onion because that is what grew best this year for us was the red onions. So that's what I'm using because as you can tell, most of the stuff in here is cut, has come from our homestead, which I'm so proud of. You can chop your garlic. You can mince your garlic. You can use a garlic press. I like to use a microplane. This is a really fine grater. I used, I like to use a microplane and just grate it into, into whatever I'm using it in. It's fast, it's easy, and it grates down to just little tiny pieces that just melt right in. And it just flavors everything so well. Now I'm doing three cloves. These are very large cloves. <laughs> Very large cloves. We grow these here on the homestead. See, these are very, very large cloves. So, if your cloves aren't that large, you may want to use a little bit more. Or if you don't like garlic that much, then... If you don't like garlic that much, then don't add that much garlic. Or if you don't have fresh garlic, you can use granulated garlic. It will work just fine. Now, I'm going to knock all of this in because you don't want to miss any of that beautiful garlic. Especially homegrown garlic. You had, trust me, homegrown garlic is the best. To this, I am adding one jar of home canned tomatoes. 
If you don't have home canned tomatoes, you can just use a regular 15 ounce can, 15 or 16, I don't remember which it is, of diced tomatoes with their juice. You want, you want their juice in this too. I know that sounds a little odd to put tomato in this, but the acidity of the tomatoes really cuts through the richness of the gravy and makes it just delicious. We're gonna add that beautiful can of tomatoes and those are from the homestead too. We are going to add a cup and three fourths of beef broth. Now we are going to add a couple of healthy pinches, about three healthy pinches of salt. Now we will probably have to up that seasoning later. And a good amount of black pepper. I'm using fresh cracked black pepper, but you use what you use in your house. The more black pepper and beef stew, the better, if you ask me, that is. So to this, we are also adding two bay leaves. I love bay leaf in this. It is amazing. And also, we are adding one very large sprig that I am breaking in half of rosemary from our huge rosemary bush. If you've been watching us, you know we've got a huge rosemary bush that overwintered, even though it's not supposed to here. Rosemary is beautiful in this. If you don't have fresh rosemary, you can use dried. You can use a good, probably half a teaspoon, half to three fourths of a teaspoon of dried rosemary. Remember to crush it in your hands before you put it in. Now stir everything together. Now stir all those veggies and everything together. Now, we are going to take this over to our crock pot and I'll show you what we do next. We have our liner in our crock pot. Now you wanna put the lid on. And my crock pot is programmable. If you don't have a programmable one, that's fine. Um, you wanna select low. You wanna cook this on low. And you wanna do between eight and nine hours. I know that sounds like a lot, but you can put this on in the morning I'm doing about eight and a half right now. We'll see how, how it goes once it starts cooking really well. But you can put this on in the morning before you go to work or whatever. That's what I'm doing. I'm putting it on this morning. I will go do our homestead chores and do everything. And then when it comes supper time tonight, I will have a delicious meal ready to eat. We are at about the halfway through mark. And I'm gonna open this and show you what this deliciousness looks like. We're gonna give it a little stir. Look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Now we're going to give it a little stir. Now, I know that looks more like a soup than a stew. When this is all done, when everything's all cooked, I'm going to show you how to thicken that gravy and make it into a nice thick gravy. But look at that. It's already looking good. This house is smelling amazing. So now we're gonna let it finish cooking. I told you earlier that I would show you how to thicken up that gravy. Well, here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna teach you, teach you how to make a slurry. This is three tablespoons of cornstarch, and this is three tablespoons of cold water. It has to be cold water, because cornstarch does not activate in warm water, it just clumps. So you wanna add your cold water to your cornstarch and stir it up. And it will look like it's not going to thicken anything. That it will look like it's just some milk. <laughs> and that it's, it's not going to thicken anything. But the minute it hits hot liquid, it will start to thicken. You want to do this about, when you have about 15 or 20 minutes left on your cook time on your stew. Now I'm going to take it over here and pour it in. Okay, here's our beautiful stew. Now I've taken out the rosemary stems and I've taken out the bay leaves. And now, you may need all of this and you may not. So pour in about half and give it a good stir. And you will see it immediately start to get a little bit thicker. And you, you can determine from there if you need to add any more, depending on how thick you like your gravy in your stew. I'm gonna add just a little bit more.
and see it's already thickening nicely it's a beautiful stew right there now we'll be back when it's time to taste it all right so now i've got me a good looking bite here i'm gonna taste it i know i've been blowing on it for a second i'm trying not to burn myself but it's a beautiful looking beef stew you got that that piece of beef there nice beautiful tater and carrot mmm well i tell you what it sounds good now it ain't quite cold enough necessarily to feel like it's a, a, a cool fall day but you know what it smells so good i don't really care but now see if i can eat one without burning myself mm. wow that's awesome get you a piece of cornbread some sweet tea how about it all right so thank you so guys so much for watching this is, a, this is a brilliant beef stew. Angela Kay knows what she's doing. She's putting food together. Um, so stay tuned because there might be down the road sometime an episode or a video where she's showing you how to make this delicious cornbread right here. Okay. So not right now, but keep coming back. It's going to be out there. I promise you. All right. So thank you guys for watching. We do appreciate it. I'm Jason. That's Angela K. We love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.